was just set aside because this other person had come in, this other um, university professor had come in. I, I forget his credentials, but you know, said him and his students found it, and then it was just totally shut down. So the uh, the the paper never came out. And this is all too typical, as we're going to be kind of discussing here uh, coming up later in the show. <clears throat> but overall, it was a great, great trip. We also visited Poverty Point. Now, this was very interesting. Now, Poverty Point was one of the um, three. Third time. Oh, third. Yeah, it was our third time. Uh, I think the previous two times we were there, Brad, we didn't actually get the, the guided tour. But we. Hey, guys, uh, one second. Apparently, yeah. the something went wrong with the stream, and it just now went live. So let's back up. Okay. Let's welcome it. Sorry about that, everybody. We thought we were live. Apparently, it wasn't. So welcome, hey. everyone. Cosmographia, hey. we are live. Do I have Do I have recording permission, by the way? Yeah, we've oh, been yeah. kind of uh, uh, rushing no. things. So let me let me see if I can record here, too. Thanks. Hold on. Let me try to do that for you. Let's yeah, see. chat. We've been uh, <laughs> we've all been talking <laughs> really? for the past no five kidding. minutes thinking we were live. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I don't know go, what Bradley. happened. I sounded so smart too. Damn it! <laughs> all right, you got him. I mean, show him. over. We said all everything we needed to be we needed to be said, right, guys? Yeah. All right. Thanks right? for coming, guys. Well, yeah, surprise, sorry, guys. surprise! That there's glitches. You know, the glitches are following us for the last couple of weeks yeah. now. Yeah. So Kyle and I were looking. We're seeing the chat. Like, aren't they supposed to be on? Recording we're like, Wait a in progress. We're supposed to be live right now. Anyway. So yeah. <laughs> so what we were talking about when we thought we were talking to all of you was uh, that we we did get to go <laughs> visit. The uh, the bone bed that George had mentioned, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a very in it was very interesting. We didn't okay, so we didn't get to see the physical site because it was there was a flood, like the day before they got six inches or something like that of rain. Mm -hmm. Roads were closed, like Brad was saying, when you guys couldn't hear it because we weren't live. Roads yeah, were closed access and everything. was yeah. to the site was limited to primitive roads, and they were completely flooded over. Right, and as far as I knew from talking to the people, they were saying that the site itself was probably underwater as well because it's mm -hmm. you know it's on that creek area, so. But we got an excellent presentation uh, from Kenneth. What did you guys say? The last name? Kenneth Tease. 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 Yeah. Uh, the geologist from the site that did this basically discovered the, uh, that did a lot of the digging and discovering in the area. And uh, mm -hmm. he talked to us for three hours, showed us all kinds of amazing stuff. It was really, really interesting. Yeah. He had a great uh, um, setup of, of various specimens he pulled out of the site. And I was bragging there when we were, earlier talking how I, you know, I learned quite a bit there from, you know, being able to handle the specimens and, and, you know, differentiate between some of the different species and so on. But the thing I was bragging about was how I now can tell the age of a mastodon by uh, examining his bowlers. Right. So <laughs> I'm quite pleased with myself now. Yes. I mean, that's a skill. Yeah, he had several examples of the the teeth, right? The mastodons mm -hmm. that are the browsers that have to grind up branches and stuff. And then the, you know, the the mammoths that eat the grass and it just kind of, <clears throat> you know, rub against each other. So, yeah, huge difference. Um, and, and also, Malcolm was there with us, right? And uh, as a, he's got a doctorate in geochemistry. So he, he understood a lot of these things and had some uh, deep discussions about the salt salt dome and uh, things that are uh, happening out in the Gulf of Mexico and, uh, you know, really enjoyed uh, – he, he really enjoyed being able to talk to, to someone and get back into some of his field work that he's been away from for a long time. So, uh, yeah, we all had a great time there. Yeah, you know, he's quite an authority on the connection between oil deposits and salt domes. And so a lot of the oil, you know, being recovered from the, the uh, Gulf of Mexico is situated where it is because of these salt domes. And there's this huge salt dome right under the, the site that we were visiting. And, um, and you could see the topographical expression of this subterranean or this buried salt dome, which pretty much controlled the, 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 the pattern of erosion and the, the creek distribution and the floodplains and everything on the surface. So that was really interesting learning about that. Um, and then we talked briefly about a little bit of the controversy uh, associated with the site. And Brad, maybe you could reiterate that um, because as in so many of these things, there's always now, especially with politics pervading virtually everything, contaminating everything, there's all kinds of controversies. Um, 
so why don't you address that again, Brad? Uh, the the um, how Kenneth uh, got denied. Oh, after- oh, that's right. Yeah, well, he had written up a, a scientific paper that was getting reviewed for publication, and they had invited another university professor in there, and he brought his students. <clears throat> And I, I don't know what possesses somebody to do this. I, I I don't think we got the inside scoop on there, but they claimed that they found it, that they were the first ones to see it. So there was a discrepancy in in the research and who uh, had ac- actually initially found and did the excavations on the site. So they shut it all down. So the paper was not published. And he's been repeatedly denied access Uh since he's not a, a archaeologist, paleontologist, he's a geologist, and so mm-hmm. they're saying he's not uh, qualified or able to do further excavations there. So he's and now it's in the hands of a conservancy, and they're ultra protective of their land, right? Um, and and they keep him from having certain accesses there. So it's it's very frustrating situation. Again, we keep finding again and again, and even with the even with the three uh, scientists that we talked about at the three sites we stopped on uh, during this trip. He has Ken Kenneth has a uh, bachelor's degree in geology and an M and his MA is focused on paleontology. So he is he, okay. He is got both. But somehow they still deem that he was unqualified yeah, to because he's not a PhD. Um, remove remove anything yeah. or dig any deeper or, you know, check more sites. Uh, nearby because they have several and ideas of of you know due to the water flow and the distribute distributaries and uh tributaries of of the creeks you know where there might be other collections of bones and right. and they're not allowing him to go investigate that it's That's a right. shame yeah it yeah. is and he it's spent totally 15 years studying that site i think yeah you could tell he was rightfully frustrated yeah oh yeah yeah so one of the other sites we visited was Poverty Point, which was, uh, I think, ep- what, episode six of Graham Hancock's Ancient Apocalypse. It, I don't remember which episode, but it was uh, it, it was featured in in and uh, Mark, I do not have his card. I've forgotten his last name. The archaeologist that we requisitioned to guide us around the site. Um. Anyways, he knew Graham. He. He participated in the uh, ancient apocalypse. That's right. Uh, uh, Docu series, and uh, what I came away with this, which I didn't know from our previous. Now, the two previous times we had been there, the Great Mound, the, the seventy-two foot tall mound, which is probably ten feet lower than it was in its pristine condition, at least, was was wooded over. It was forested over. I don't know if you remember that, Brad, but. Um, I do. Yeah. 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 And you so, noticed it right away. Yeah. Yeah. We get there and uh, the whole thing, the trees had been removed. And of course, that's part of preserving it. And when it uh, was originally built, it would have been, uh, of course, no trees growing on it. But uh, <clears throat> I should actually, let's see, maybe pull up a, pull up a, a Google Earth. Do you happen to have anything handy at your fingertips, Brad? Um uh, I have been I've been full on PowerPoint show with Malcolm, um, yeah, so see. no, I don't have any maps ready right up. So, but I will say we were uh, on the way out from Atlanta to Austin uh, was the stop at Poverty Point, and the uh, the bone beds we've already been talking about were on the way out of Austin, and uh, Russ and Kyle were able to meet us meet up with us over there. And uh, then the the third stop that we'll get to at LSU with the mounds that have been found there and their uh, possibly even more ancient history than Poverty Point, which is looked at as the the oldest Native American site in the on the continent at this point. Um, you know, so there was a sequence we got to, we got to see something at, at each stage of our of our trip, and uh, yeah, obviously we're going to address you know what we mm-hmm. the the fun and uh controversy we had with the uh, with the JRE there in Austin. Do a quick share here. Um I think uh, hopefully you're seeing this the Yep. Yes. Yeah, the this is the great mound here. Um that yeah, the previous two visits was completely forested over and uh 
the interesting thing, let's see if we can see what we've got here, if we've got any aerial views of the site. Uh, I just pulled up the pulled up one of the sites that I was able to to get here. Um, yeah, I, I I took some uh, some shots during the the slideshow, the little movie we watched, and uh, yeah, initially they thought this hill was uh, shaped like an an eagle or a thunderbird or some kind of some kind of large bird. Yeah, here here you can kind of see um, the geometric rings. There's concentric rings. They're being cut off by the Macon Bayou here. Um, but what was out, one of the first thing I found really interesting here was let's see, and there's a couple of other mounds. So there's actually three mounds. Mound A. Um, they're not showing the other two mounds on here, but Mound A is the big one, and um, <clears throat> the plaza area, which is all of this area out here. This is, I, I didn't realize before this particular trip was that, um, you know, it was very irregular, undulating with sinkholes and things. And so they had to um, level the site before they built these concentric rings of raised earth, which are now, of course, eroded down to mere nubs three to six feet high, but were probably between six and 10 feet high when they were brand new. But the amount of earth that had to be moved uh, just just to level the site before they actually even built the rings or the mounds was phenomenal. Uh, trying to recall what the calculations were, but it was in the order of like, Brad, help me remember, was it like in the order of 50,000 dump trucks? Um, that was for Mound A that you started that looking would, at. Yeah, it was, was 31,000 dump trucks full of full of earth that had to be moved and and the craziness that they had decided one one, uh, researcher had decided that it had been moved in a very short period of time not over multiple years or generations but less than 90 Mm -hmm. days perhaps as short as 30 days to move 31,000 dump trucks full of material earth and material in a basket that you carry on your back right Uh now and how 20,000 people Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a, bi- I was, I recall, a bioarchaeologist, and I still haven't accessed his papers on this uh, site yet, which I'm very keen to do, um, and I will do soon. But the um, the uh, point that he was making was that, the like all other of these mound structures you find all over, they were built in layers rather than not just a big heap of earth piled up, but actually layers that were uh, tamped oftentimes with contrasting types of material. Um, and so what he did was he looked at the, uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to do a, just go ahead and stop share. What he did was he looked at the, um, the layering. Now you can picture this. If you, if you spread a fresh mound of earth, how long is it going to take before it's now gotten pollen and seeds and preliminary you know, first stage growth, ecological um, restoration, literally a matter of weeks, right? If Unless it's the middle of winter. But the thing was, is that he was able to extract a core, find minimal dating material from the top to the bottom that showed no difference in age at all. And in the layers, if there had been a hiatus, like Brad said, if there had been a year between each layer, that would show up. There would be vegetable remains there. There would be seeds. There would be pollen, et cetera. There would be remnants of whatever had been growing there, but there was nothing, virtually nothing between each of the layers, which showed him that there was no hiatus between the deposition of each of these layers. And so as Brad said, the amount of time to create the whole mound structure could not have exceeded 90 days, and it may have been as quick as 30 days. Now, what that brings to mind is, so I asked Mark, the, the lead archaeologist, who was showing us the site, and and uh, the, what it said was that, what he said was that the number of people, they calculated the number of man hours required to move this material and how many people it would have taken to move this material within a month or two. And it was what, 20,000 people, right? Something like that. And and, and 20,000 people. So where do you, how do you recruit 20,000 people 
to come and work for 24 hours a day, nonstop, moving this much earth, and how large of a territory would you have to draft these people from in order to get them all to the site to do this stupendous work of engineering over a period of a, a month to a couple of months. And it turned out that the area that you would have to go to for the population was what, a couple of hundred thousand square miles? It was something huge, phenomenally huge. huge. So no matter how you slice it, whether or not it was done simple manual labor, you're stuck with this paradox of an, a massive amount of social organization. And uh, you would have to bring people in from all over. And not now you've got not just the people working on it, but the people, you know, you've got to provide the workers with food and clothes and shelter. So it would have taken a massive social organization to pull this off. Massive. Or they were using some kind of methodology that we're unaware of. And right. um, yes, yeah, somebody somebody gave me a, a fact that might have been our our buddy Jim that's in Asheville I've been hanging out with and uh has been on several trips, but he was saying if there's two point three million uh stones in the Great Pyramid and it was built in twenty five years, that would be like over five hundred of those, you know, multi ton stones per day that it would have been placed perfectly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that doesn't even include the other two pyramids. You know, right. there's some crazy amount of organization to pull that off. And it's even even if, you know, it's just so unlikely there. There's some other technology or method to build these these large structures that we don't quite understand yet. Excuse me for one second. Yeah, so the the mark that was on the show with with graham hancock yeah he was he was able to lead us a tour they've got some new trams uh, apparently they've got some funding so we spent an hour and a half plus uh going through the poverty point site with him and uh he, he's somebody that we talked to afterward uh you know interesting guy to talk to and knows obviously a lot of the history about the site and uh there's there's many digs and and different projects still ongoing there and nearby and we invited him to be on uh the podcast with us and he uh you know wholeheartedly said heck yeah so uh we will be talking to mark in the future yeah and he can he can go into more detail on some of these paradoxes that we've been uh just discussing i i'm not going to say at all that he's ready to start thinking alternative technologies or anything like that um but that doesn't matter um because even even within the more, you know, typical paradigm of, of simple human labor, we're still faced with something really, really complicated to explain. There, there, there's, a, there's a bona fide mystery here. Um, so, yeah, it it's, it's, uh, was very interesting. And then uh, the other thing we visited, you mentioned, was the mounds on... Uh, LSU campus in Baton Rouge. We diverted off and we met, uh, we met, um, Brooks. What was his last name? El Elrod Brooks. Elrod Elwood L you're in the ballpark. Yeah. In the ballpark. I don't have his card in front of me either. I should have grabbed it, but, um, but yeah, he did the, uh, he did some investigations of these two mound sites on LSU, and uh, we'll let Brad <clears throat> get his uh, maybe get his. Uh, he's having to address some issues there, apparently. I guess so. Um, <laughs> well, the the bottom line was this: there were two mounds. There's two mounds there on the LSU campus, and the dating uh, so brooks the archaeologist or geoarchaeologist that we met with and toured the site and got to visit his laboratory and his office and was able to see his his uh methodology his his investigatory protocols and so on so there was controversy involved with this as well and this the controversy was basically that the two mounds were much older than anybody imagined I think the, the the hiatus in dating between the two said that they were separated by 
fifteen hundred years, maybe a thousand years. But the oldest mound um, was dating to eleven thousand three hundred years ago, and so of course that has been very controversial. <clears throat> and several of his colleagues actually turned against him um, because they just didn't want to accept the fact that it was dating that old. But he took us through and showed us in great detail his dating protocols and how he double and triple checked the dates and withheld publication until he was sure that the dates were correct. And it seems more like the uh, reluctance to accept those dates are based more upon uh, people's preconceptions than actual evidence. Um, but yeah, that was a very interesting uh, trip as well that I would like to stay in touch with, with Brooks on that, and maybe even see if he would join us for a podcast to talk about it in detail if he's so inclined. Yeah, I'm sure he was. Yeah. He he gave us a tour of the uh, science building he's worked out of for a long time in uh, LSU campus there. Uh huh. And right. uh, you know, just just strange because he explained how much experience he has worldwide. Go going to what he what he's referring to. You know, he's a maybe exclusive group of geo archaeologists. He's a geologist that's all also doing archaeological studies and and research and digs and even though he's been around the globe published numerous papers uh they were still not accepting of him doing that type of work right there on the on the campus where he's you know been a professor for decades at this point right yeah right. really strange uh that they're you know uh, yeah well oh, okay so, <laughs> so yeah, we overall, had some good side trips. Yeah, we did. And then, of course, as to the main trip that everybody's wondering about, you know, the, the the Rogan podcast, we had a, I thought it was a good podcast. It was frustrating to me, and I'll get into why. Um, you know, there is, there's a, there, there's two parts to this whole story with the alternative energy. There is the intrigue and the controversy and basically what I would call the bullshit. Um. You know, just like with so many of these things, I mean, I recent we've all been treated to the example of the kind of bullshit that's been directed at Graham Hancock and uh, ancient apocalypse. And I don't know how many of the so, of these critiques, is, to use a polite term, the, which are really just hit jobs and smear jobs on ancient apocalypse and on Graham that came through mainstream media and through, you know, the archaeological establishment. But I've perused those in great detail, probably eight or 10 of them. Uh, and I'm, I've written up something about that I'm going to be posting real soon on the website, which is a sort of a, a breakdown of these attacks on Graham and uh, the personal attacks. Uh, and, and really, the one thing, if you really go about this without preconceptions and you go through these attack jobs, what you come away with is there's zero substance there. It's every red hair, every every logical fallacy in the book, from red herrings to appeals to authority to uh, ad hominem attacks, uh, et cetera. It's all basically contrived. And one of the things that you, you really become aware of as you go through the different uh, uh, attacks from the various sources is that they're all essentially using the same talking points. And as I've gone through, you know, eight or 10 of these, you know, and every one of them is coming, you know, to this, oh, this is a dangerous conspiracy theory. And Graham Hancock is a white supremacist and a racist. And as I'm thinking about that, okay, I go through, you watch the, the, the episodes. How is it even conceivable that you would have 10 people independently watching that and then come away with the conclusion that, oh, this is, he's a white supremacist. I mean, how would even one person watch the series and come away with that idea that, oh, he's a racist, a white supremacist, and he's, he's uh, you know, promoting dangerous conspiracy theories. But you get 10 attacks and they're all saying the same thing? <clears throat> what is this telling you? You know, I don't think that There's that's a, a coincidence that they're all looking at, the, at ancient apocalypse and concluding that Graham is a white supremacist. Well, so, they're trying to manipulate the narrative, right? 
get that out to the public and repeat it enough times and uh, people start believing and talk about that's it. But, you know, apparently Mm. Hitler had some interest in the occult at at minimum. But, yeah, these ancient societies, too, Mm. and he looked into it. And, you know, so it's instantly linked to, you know, his Aryan Mm. race. Right. So that's white supremacists. So any, anybody they're they're trying to um, taint even, even further the topic of Atlantis by linking mm-hmm. that automatically to it. Or the topic that there may have been something more going on in prehistory than the, than, than the standard models are willing to admit or to recognize. And, and so we, we've got this thing. It's almost like we see two contending paradigms right now. And what, what bothers me and and good because of the fact that Graham has a, a a sterling reputation amongst the people that follow him, that know his work, know that he's an extremely intelligent man, that he's done his homework. He's you know when you go through his books, you know he, he literally you you go through the last three or four books, his references go into the thousands. You know he's read hundreds and digested hundreds of scientific papers, interviewed hundreds of knowledgeable people from all all parts of the spectrum he's traveled the world and visited how many countries right for 30 years over 30 years he's been doing this right he's he's an investigative journalist and he's doing what investigative journalists do and he's doing it very well yet what you see over and over again is oh well the experts have come in and said this and they've said that and oh we've debunked atlantis right well I would right here and now be more than happy for any of these experts that are claiming Atlantis has been debunked to come on this show and we'll go toe to toe. We'll go toe to toe. We'll have fun with it. But, you know, a lot of people I think in here have watched my Atlantis series where I've got eight or nine hours of dissecting Plato's account and looking at it in the context of what we actually know about geology and geography and oceanography and astronomy and so on, right? And I've tried to make the case that, no, I've not proven Atlantis exists, but I've shown that it could have, that there's nothing so fringe or outlandish or outrageous about what Plato's actually describing that it couldn't have existed, that it's completely out of the question that it could have existed, right? Coming back to the thing here with um, with the energy, let, let, let's talk for a minute about what happened on Rogan. <clears throat> okay, so I had spent many, many hours putting together a slideshow about the technology, about the science, right? Well, years ago, in his work, he has come across, Malcolm has come across, been confronted with some of the same kinds of bullshit. People wanting to discredit him for various reasons. In this case, um, you know, as a as a geophysical prospector, he discovered oil, right? And at the time, one of the major oil companies in the world uh, had a shortfall in their of thirty percent in their uh, reserves, and it put them in a pickle. And they were coveting the drilling licenses for this particular oil reserve. And so there was a whole scandal that went down that ended up in the top CEOs of this particular uh, oil company actually having to resign from the board of directors. Uh, what they did was uh, they, they mounted a campaign, a hit piece against them to scare away investors is essentially what the strategy was. <clears throat> I've had extensive discussions about this with one of the most um, acute and or astute investigative journalists in Australia, who's looked thoroughly into it, looked thoroughly into these controversies. The sum total of it is that there's nothing there, but you have to dig into it a little bit because the effort was made to portray Malcolm in a very bad light because they wanted to drive away investors. They wanted to scare away investors. So they dug up every little piece of dirt they could find. The fact that when he was a young man, he'd been a pastor, that was used against him in order to portray him as some kind of a religious nut. But I've been talking with him for over seven years now. I've managed to, I have at my disposal, thousands of pages of notes 
of license applications, of technical specifications, of schematics that I've been able to go through, you know, in depth uh, to see this. I've got um, original videos that uh, were recorded in four different independent testing laboratories in uh, actually five different independent testing laboratories in four different countries. Uh, I've met most of the principals involved in the companies that have been created around the implementation of this technology. They are highly qualified, highly technically capable people, credible people. I've met them personally. I've had uh, I've, I've personally met and and hung out with the uh, CEO of the Strike Foundation. I've vetted this and looked into it thoroughly over a period of seven or eight years. Bradley and I, along with Mike Robertson of HowTube, we've been engaged in the last several months of building a comprehensive pre presentation that breaks down the technology step by step. And our plan is to incrementally begin putting this out there. But the first thing we got to do is put this intrigue, controversial, conspiracy shit to bed because it's bullshit. It's the same kind of bullshit that has been uh, thrown at Graham and all of the other, if you go through the list of people that have, have made inroads into this kind of energy, going all the way back to Nikola Tesla, they've all been on the receiving end of these attempts to discredit them. And that's all I'm saying is before you get online, like you think you know what the hell you're talking about and say, oh, Ronald fell for this hook, line and sinker. And all I had to do was go online for five seconds and I knew what was going on. I'm sorry if you went online for five seconds, you don't have the fucking slightest idea what's going on. Okay. So what happened? We go on Joe and Joe had seen some of this stuff as, as did Jamie. And you know, it, it, and I'm sure it'll get, get posted at some point. And when it does, what you're going to see is that Joe kind of got into attack mode, which I respect, which was great, but it kind of derailed the whole conversation from what I wanted to focus on, which was the science, which was the technology, into all of this intrigue and conspiratorial stuff and the backdrop. Now, there are papers, there's even a book out there that goes into great detail on the backstory of the attempts to discredit Malcolm. And uh, again, it, when you dive into it, you realize there's nothing more there than the, than the attacks on Graham Hancock or any of the other people. Uh, that, that have been working in this kind of a field. The point here is though, unlike in, in any of the previous is the open sourcing. So the fact that it's been open sourced means that anybody can go and dive into it. So do you have no fucking excuse for coming up and buying into whatever bullshit is the first thing that comes up on the internet. Okay. Sure. It should raise red flags and you should, yeah, I got to look into it, but then look into it before you think you're qualified to have an opinion about the matter. Okay. So all of it is being open sourced. What Bradley and I are doing and Mike Robertson is we're taking this massive material and we're organizing it into a coherent fashion so that we can put it out there in a way that people can understand it, that we can put it out there a chunk at a time. Um, and that's one of the things we're going to be doing over the next few months um, and towards and, the summer. It's the same exact program that Malcolm's going to be using to present to the leadership in India, who just announced that they were investing $4.3 billion in new energy infrastructure. Which He's, includes he, this particular that, energy. That was announced. Uh, Bloomberg, he showed us the articles last week. Um, he's going, he's going around the world using this program. He says he might use it for the next decade. So we're going to that amount of detail to get it just right. Uh, and, and Randall is going to be able to break it down, uh, segment by segment, uh, layer by layer and, and present it, uh, through how to our partner where knowledge is first. Yes. Well said, Bradley. And, um, Oh, I'll just do another share screen here. Let's see here what we got. Okay, so here, you know, this is some of the principals involved. I met many of these gentlemen here. Gavin Houghton, CEO of Energy Division of Rio Tinto Employees. He's got 6,500 employees, uh, 30 years experience mining and resource companies, uh, private equity experience. He's uh, also a graduate of World Bank. He's one of the principals in the country. 
um, John Garrison, Ranjit Sadi, the list goes on, Christopher Foster, um, Daryl Danklin. I've had lunch with him and spent, you know, hours going over uh, the background, the context of this story to try to come to an understanding of it. This is uh, the business plan that's out there. It's a very real business plan. It's not a con. Um, and so people, oh. until, until you don't know what's, until you know what's going on, it would be better if you just shut the hell up and tried to learn something, you know, instead of believing the first thing you see online. Okay. Um, the, the amount of work that's been done is incredible. Um, he spent seven years on this Island to connect and, uh, recover his decades of research and, and write it down. And that's a good chunk of what's on the strike foundation dot earth website. Uh, I've started digging into that myself and I was at Randall's the other night and, uh, there's a, you know, two telephone book size file folder, uh, that's listed, uh, as a PDF on the website, section 17 to 20. And this, this is not a work of a charlatan or a grifter or, a you know, anybody that's trying to fake their way through to make, make some money off other people. He has, he has put in the time he has put in the work. He has designed and built the machines. He has the, the graphics. Uh, it's, it's been decades and decades of work and it's extremely impressive. And you cannot just say, you know, he's, he's trying to fake Randall out. Um, it's, it's unbelievable what he's been able to, to, present and uh produce and actually bring it to the public at this point and uh just grateful that randall is someone where who's he's identified as uh the the primary person that could convey this uh with his knowledge of sacred geometry because that's at the core of this technology he's one of one basically on the planet that can uh get this understandable. And, and I think so many people that are here with us already get, uh, the, the greatness of Randall's ability to teach and put things in simple terms and, and get you interested and want to know more. And that, that's part of why this has all come together. And we're going to, we're going to go through this. Randall's going to go through this, but to dismiss him because you've seen a few articles on the internet, um, though, those can be explained away, look deeper, dig through at that strike foundation dot earth website. Uh, you're going to be wowed and fascinated and you're going to be inspired that the world's about to change in a huge way. And, uh, you're all going to be doing it with us. Yes, sir. Was that previous picture, the, uh, imploded pipe? Yes. He was talking yeah. about it. Like that is phenomenal go, right there. Right. <laughs> go down. Oh yeah. Yeah. The equivalent of a mini black hole. Yeah. Now that five inch pipe <clears throat> in this retrofit of a caterpillar generator right here. Um, this is the five inch pipe going in here and, and we're not going to try to get into too much of the, the uh, technology and the science behind this right now. That's what we're going to be doing coming up. We're going to be sharing these slides <clears throat> we're going to be sharing video clips and so on so people can do their own research um, and to understand how this thing works. Um, basically, here's your, let's see, here's your, um, well, here, here's your, your Caterpillar generator mounted on a flatbed truck with the technology uh, retrofitted to it. Um, this is your uh, G35008E retrofit industrial scale um MSAT plasma driven power generator. And so, so you get some, some of the scale with it sitting on the back of that flatbed truck. But uh, just for reference, that stainless steel sphere up there is, is two feet diameter, 24 inches in diameter. So right? this is a, this is a, you know, full size construction of how to produce uh, the, these plasmoids, which is going to be one of the first videos that Randall puts together to introduce what are the, the MSAT plasmoids. And you can see here the the, the testing, uh, uh, the metrics here, testing um, the pressures, testing the temperatures, testing the effluents coming out of the exhaust, both with and without the, the uh, technology activated. Um, like you can see here, there's a chimney retrofit. Uh, 
system that's been developed, which captures all of this carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, um, the sulfur dioxide, the pollutants that are coming out of chimneys as a result of uh, coal incineration. And it breaks it down at the atomic level and recycles it, and it gets that those that recycled uh, material in the form of plasmas then gets uh, recycled and reused as energy. What comes out of the smokestack is almost pure oxygen. Uh, there's well established principles um, <clears throat> behind how some of these things work. the The Hilch vortex tube is one of them. Now this is this is. Even though scientists looking at this cannot explain exactly how it works, it works. It's been tested repeatedly. It's actually in use by the uh, refrigeration industry. But here you says it says here you use a compressed air supply with a room temperature of plus twenty three degrees centigrade. And Kyle, while you're at it, could you quickly do a conversion twenty three C to F Fahrenheit? Um, we can I see. Will say, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, well, yeah, so you can see the compressed air comes in tangentially, and then it's set into these spirals that separates the cold and the hot air. 73.4 Fahrenheit. What is it? What was 70, it? 73.4. Yeah, so just 23 C. 20, 23 C. 73, okay, so like room temperature. So cold air comes out minus 15 degrees centigrade and the minimum recorded temperature using this Hilch vortex tube was minus 50 degrees centigrade. Yeah. That's what 50, that negative 15 is five Fahrenheit and negative 50 is negative 58 Fahrenheit. So that's pretty cold. If you were out in just your skivvies, Kyle, and it was negative 58, you wouldn't last long. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not the ice it, man. You're That's not sure. Your <laughs> but look what's coming out the other end. Let's see. So 44 degrees, but the maximum recorded temperature ever in one of these uh, Hilch vortex tubes, 200 degrees centigrade. Yeah, it's 392 Fahrenheit and uh, 44 is 111. Yeah. There are no moving parts. Pressurized gas is injected tangentially into a swirl chamber and accelerated to a high rate of rotation due to the conical nozzle down here in the right at the end of the tube only the outer shell of the compressed gas is allowed to escape at that end the remainder is forced to return in an inner vortex of reduced diameter within the outer vortex and now that is the um fundamental idea behind the thunderstorm generator which is part of this system um, which again, we're, we're, we're not going to get into that too much tonight. We're going to talk about, uh, as we're incrementally releasing specific, uh, let's say sort of tutorials on how the technology works. Um, people with some engineering skill and access to some resources will actually have at their disposal, uh, you know, schematics like this, for example, that they will actually be able to, 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 to build and replicate some of the, the, the machinery itself. So they can test uh, the thunderstorm generator, which is based upon this, the, the natural thunderstorm. Um, because you see, how does the thunderstorm work? Well, it, it's the cold air meeting the hot air. Um, and that's kind of the similar idea. And here you can see the natural vorticular motion of the air coming down here uh, as, it, as it compresses. And that's very much what happens in this part of the uh, of the technological uh, series, here is a cross section of the catalytic resonator, which is also the the generator. So all the, the scientific principles are here; they're available. You just need to look at them and get all this trash and stuff out of your mind and look at the science. I'll I'll, I'll end up by and, saying that. Oh, go ahead, Brad. No. <laughs> I was just going to say that he, re Malcolm repeatedly says that there's nothing new under the sun, right. that these are not all his creations. He's fully giving credit uh, to, to prior researchers that, you know, haven't been able to follow through to, to the finale. Uh, he says he's on standing on the shoulders of giants. He realizes the contributions of, of people like Victor Schauberger and Nikola Tesla 
and uh, Fleischman and Pons and Ken Shoulders, and he repeatedly gives these people credit for getting getting so close and bring it to the point where he could you know cross the finish line with it. And uh, it, it looks like he has been able to produce what they were working diligently most of their lives for, uh, and and we're going to be able to you know hopefully very soon and enjoy the fruits of all those men's great work. Yes. And just to conclude with, with the Joe Rogan, uh, experience, you know, it, it, the interview got sidetracked and derailed into the controversies. And my frustration out of it was if it ever gets aired, you'll be able to see that, um, that I am repeatedly trying to steer the, steer the conversation back to the science, back to the, back to the technology. The end of it was that, um, you know, it got a little bit, I, no, it didn't get heated, not at all. But, but the approach was, and I think Malcolm got frustrated that, you know, he kind of got triggered a little bit because Joe kind of went into a bit of attack mode and, and, you know, was trying to, you know, it, it you know, if the guy is coming in there with a con, he was going to try to expose the con, but you can see you actually, there are several points there where, where it's striking Joe that, Hey, it really does look like there's something here. Uh, but the end result was he thought, well, you know, I think I'd like to vet this a little further before I post it. And I said, whatever you're comfortable with, Joe, I'm supportive of a hundred percent. Cause again, my frustration was, is I wanted to spend a couple hours talking about the technology and I had put a lot of time into building this PowerPoint show, a lot of what we just saw, and I was ready to start explaining it. And that didn't, that didn't happen. So I was of the mind that, okay, if this doesn't get aired, that's fine with me. He actually did tell me, let's come back later on when it's just you and we can talk about this. And I said, I'm happy to do that. Um, so knowing Joe, uh, hey, he's a busy, busy man. He's on his stand-up uh, tour, I believe, now. He does his UFC. He's got He's had multiple podcasts since I was on there. And, um, and yeah, so, I mean, my thought is that he's probably just, yeah, I'll put this on the shelf until I have a chance to vet it. And he just hasn't gotten around to doing that yet, but I'm, um, and I don't think well, there's anything more to it than that. Well, it's like the, the biggest ep- economical interest in the world, right? Is energy production consumption and, and the sale of that. So mm-hmm. if you, if you create something new that, um, as, uh, uh, it wasn't J.P. Morgan, was it Bill Vanderbilt that he told us, uh, had said to Tesla, well, I can't put a meter on that. J.P. Morgan. Morgan, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we're, we're looking at that, at that now, the, the possibility of uh, energy available directly from the, the planet and the understanding of the, the charges within and without uh, in the, the planet itself, in the atmosphere, and how to manage that. Uh, to power things uh, that anybody can access. So, yeah, obviously, and and Randall and I haven't discussed what to say or not to say on this, you know, podcast. We're both super busy at this point trying to trying to get this stuff done, um, uh, or at least to a completion point for the next phase. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's it's amazing what um, this guy's been able to to produce. Um, but obviously it, it gets uh, some some very large factions upset if you're going to upset uh, their, their apple cart. But the thing is, there's technologies and ways have been devised to pivot these huge industries and all their employees into new technologies. So there's not just going to be this big void of, oh my God, all these uh, highly qualified people are out of jobs. It's like, okay, well, you've been doing this, but it can be re reassessed and realigned and you can work on this Mm -hmm. and it's going to be empowering people. Um, so don't, don't get in the mindset that, you know, that it's going to be so horrible because these industries are going to go away. That's, that's, that's not what's going to happen. There's, there's plans already in place for how these can be, uh, repositioned and and pivoted, like I said, into new technologies and empowering technologies and things that are going to benefit us all. We had a long conversation with, um, 
the head of the India Foundation. You can look this up online. Uh, the India Foundation um, is a think tank that works as a liaison between the French governments and the Indian governments. So the upshot of this conversation several months ago that I was participated in and Mike how to participated in is that um, the, 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 the head of this foundation has taken the whole uh, proposals to the Indian government and they are extremely interested in it. The Saudi government is interested in it. Um, so there, there's a lot happening, see. And so one of the things is I'm thought is that, yeah, before we go and make any grand, you know, statements about anything is over the next few months, we're going to be getting stage two testing results and let those test results speak for themselves. That's that's my approach at this point. Yeah, that's where I'm at, too. I, I want to see that. Yeah. But, you know, I've got, in the meantime, we'll be posting video clips of the stage one testing. Again, like I said, there's been, uh, what, five, I think, independent tests now of the diesel retrofit, internal combustion retrofit, the the uh, coal chimney retrofits, other applications. I'll also mention that, you know, there are patents in place uh, with licensing uh uh, that w- that will be you know implemented and these licenses will be sold at a fee over the next year two years but what malcolm is doing and that we're participating in and helping in is the open sourcing of all of the science so <clears throat> i would say one way to think about this would be think of it in terms of uh you know where the electrical industry might have been 120 or 130 years ago you know, we can understand the basics of the of the technology and the system, but who could even have begun to imagine the applications of alternating current electricity 130 years ago, right? So the idea here is, yes, there are somebody who said, well, what is it? Is it open source or is it patents? Well, it's both. Okay, dumbasses, it's both. Because number one, there are specific applications. I just showed you, you saw the briefly as I worked through the slides, there are some of those are applications, right, of the principles. But the idea of the open sourcing is to put the principles out there so they're available to the world and can never be bottled up and suppressed again. And others who want to follow along with this will have prototypes that they can that they can learn from. They will be free to take the principles and develop whatever they can using those principles. Uh, the basic principles of plasmoid physics is what it boils down to. And this is, again, the bottom line here, it's all utilizing the fourth state of matter, which is the plasma. And this is where it gets extremely interesting. And uh, again, we're going to be getting into that. Uh, we're going to be putting out tutorials, and we're going to be putting out, to the extent that we're able to uh, scientifically understand these principles, and I will confess right now, I'm only in the grade school level with this thing. Um, but, you know, and, as, uh, as, as we said, the one of the early ones will be basically what is a plasmoid? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the first thing that, that you may find uh, some some negative info out there if you start doing your search on plasmoids. Um, but there's plasmoids that are formed in air, which are troublesome. And there are plasmoids that are formed in water through implosions and that's what we're working with and Malcolm is working with. And that's why they're uh, more distinctly named MSART and M S A A R T uh, is an acronym. Uh, Those are the plasmoids that are created through the implosions with uh, waters through these uh, bubbles that will create some ultraviolet light. Um, So, so yeah, just the intricacies of those differences Randall's going to get into and Malcolm's going to get into, and there'll be videos and uh it will get quite in depth and these will be on howtube.com uh and you know we'll have uh segments that of course we'll put on the the bigger platforms that everybody's familiar with but um knowledge knowledge first at howtube and and this is where a lot of it's going to be uh distributed widely you're talking about sonoluminescence with the star in a jar mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's yep. that's a big point of it yeah we're gonna we're gonna going to share that that's uh at the very beginning of the the powerpoint show we're presenting yes star in a jar 
lightning in a bottle start well, a jar <laughs> yeah i will uh well i'm just so yeah i certainly you. i cer- certainly expect the the rogan show to be released at some point um you know uh i think there had to be some review that uh uh sensitive information wasn't revealed uh, due to some of the licensing agreements mm-hmm. Yes. Um, you know, the timing of this or that, you know, somebody, be, because when, when, it, when it came out before, uh, probably, probably a little too many details were divulged and we, we had to, you know, be more aware of, uh, of, of what could be. And, and that, that needs to be reviewed also, um, because there are obviously global interests, uh, taking part in this, this research and its evaluation. So it's, it's, it's very, it's very sensitive. It's not just, Oh, Joe got scared or, you know, Joe's bosses said, Hey, you can't do yeah. this. You know, don't, don't get those, those simple answers. Uh, it's, it's complex. Uh, and, and it's a, it's an amazing podcast and I, I do expect it to come out. Uh, once some, some of these timings are, are synchronized out and, and a few more tests are, are completed that would be broad public knowledge where some of these things have been more on the private private scale um and and those should be you know all within in the the orbit we number 2023 mhm <clears throat> well said brad but yeah i mean we have all the technical specifications <clears throat> from the tests and so on so and all of that will be part of what we're sharing um to make it easier for people to access the science. And it's an ongoing process. We're learning as we go forward. And we want you, we want to bring along as many people as we can to, to so this can become more widely known because uh, it could be transformative. It will be transformative. So. And again, we're due. And don't. Uh, so again, my, 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 Final say on this matter before we move on is going to be, yes, bear in mind that, you know, a lot of the stuff you're going to come up with on the internet is all a deliberately contrived smear campaign to discredit Malcolm. And if you dive into it, you'll see that the claims pretty much are about as insubstantial as the attacks on Graham Hancock and the uh, ancient apocalypse. Well, yeah, and I find it kind of comical that, you know, as much as, uh, the general audience for, for your shows and teachings, Randall, or, or questioning, you know, MSM and, uh, but they'll go on online and find something and, and they find information from the MSM and, and then that's what mm-hmm. they trust all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the downside of the internet. You know, yeah. you, you get people on there, like to me, it exemplified by this guy who put out the video. Well, I, you know, I was able to find out, you know, in five seconds, he had literally said five seconds. Yeah, yeah. He looked on the internet in five seconds. So his five seconds completely negated my seven years of investigation and research and so forth. <laughs> um, but you know, there to me, that exemplifies the problem with the internet and people who think they know what's going on and they don't have the slightest idea what's going on. Well, you know? I will, I'm, I'm skeptical. I don't have the slightest idea. I, but what's I going also on. don't have the slightest idea of what's going on. But I just, you know, I have. I guess my skepticism is just like, well, I just want to see it working. Mm-hmm. You know, you get a chance. Yeah, yeah, that'll that's, be great. That would be well, that's healthy. That's healthy. So I'm not. Don't yeah. be. Don't be gullible. I'm not like yeah. buying what? into it. I d- I'm just like, man, I don't know. Like, it would be see, great if it worked. But your attitude, gosh. Kyle, was exactly my attitude at the beginning. Well, I don't Me know. Too. It sounds yeah. good, sure. but I got to know more. And then, yeah. you know, what really what <clears throat> brought me around was meeting these other people. I showed you some of the other people who are involved who, yes, yeah, said who, who, you know, sat there and, you know, said, yeah, we were there and we've, we've seen the testing, we've seen the results. Um, and they're high level respected <laughs> international business people. Yeah. Yeah. These are not, you know, wh- whoever, I mean, they're, they're, people that are movers and shakers mm-hmm. on the planet. Can you, yeah, uh, I mean, I've Brad, met these guys, you, you know, take talk a few, to them. few dog biscuits off your mic gain there, buddy. Me? Yeah. Turn it down a little bit. I need to back off a fist. <laughs> but see, Kyle, the difference here is that you're skeptical 
in the proper way. You're not skeptical, like immediately assuming you know what's going on. You're like skeptical. Well, I, I need to know more. Then I'll have an opinion. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's the, that's stand, the, sure. that's the appropriate way to do it. Not go, well, I'm skeptical. Oh, I found one paper. Oh, now I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> you finally learned how to be skeptical. Wow, dude. Did you finally you? learned <laughs> God, all these years. <clears throat> well, thank you. Yep, turd snake. <laughs> I'm skirp, skirping it. Well, we got so, lots of questions. I mean, a lot of them were asking you about Joe Rogan and, you know, what happened with the podcast and when are people going to get to see it and what about Malcolm? So you... Okay, well, I think we've addressed that pretty, pretty much, much, right? You've pretty much addressed that. Um, we did have a cool time there in Austin, um, a, apart from the, the Crazy Wild podcast. Um, <clears throat> we were able to go to see Joe live at one of the, the local oh, yeah. comedy clubs. Yeah. Um, so there are a couple openers and uh, that, that I think Kyle, Kyle knows of. And then, uh, amazingly, uh, you know, a very well-known comic, Ron White, came out. Yeah. Uh, before Joe, so yeah, it was a it was a heck of a show, the packed house, and was, uh, we laughed our butts off. Was it? That was uh, so Tony much fun. Cliff was there, <clears throat> right? He does. That's that's the um, the Vulcan Gas Company is the venue. Correct. Yeah, yep. that was it. Yeah. Yep. And I've got stories about Brad, but I'm not going to share them. <laughs> yeah, in this. Dude, let's hear <laughs> yeah. those stories, Brad. What happened, bro? No, no, no I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Brad on. and George, I heard just like. Well, Brad, yeah, Brad. Well, I don't over. think George actually got kicked out. But oh, okay, Br okay. <laughs> Tell us, Brad. Brad. Oh, wow. Dude. And then somebody said, "Hey, he's with he's with Randall." Dude, so they let him stay. They came and they came and got me outside. <laughs> Randall went up to the green room. He got invited, right? So he's hanging out with the with the comedians, and we're just down in the open room. So you know, I I, I tried to do my own routine on the stage. Yes, dude. They they, they, did, they didn't. They like didn't. <laughs> what was your first joke? Let's hear it. <clears throat> It was a bad song. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I wish I'd have been there for that, Brad. Yeah. I would have um I but yeah, lied. we also um went went and saw the uh the health ranger, Mike Adams. Oh right. And uh, saw his saw his cool facility and you guys recorded podcasts with him and uh, I'm not sure the status of those, but uh uh once they're released, if they're not already, I'll I'll make sure I get those links in the in the description here on on this live one we're doing. But uh yeah, excellent uh, summaries by Malcolm individually and uh, Randall. Uh, definitely getting to talk about uh, the upcoming tours that we're doing. And uh, George really keyed in on the the Cosmic Summit that's coming up in Asheville, uh, Asheville, North Carolina, where I live actually, in, in the middle of June. Uh, but yeah, we got some tours coming up. And uh, the fortunately for a few people uh it, the upper cumberland tour is not sold out anymore so there are some spaces if you want to go out with uh randall into the field uh you know check into randallcarlson.com <clears throat> sign up for the randall carlson newsletter and uh, get information about these these tours uh there's another one in the middle of may we're doing in the scablands that's the one we've done uh most often and uh, has been the most popular and it is just off the chart amazing uh story to tell out there the the landscapes uh of the cordier and floods at the end of the last ice age so yeah come out into the field with us too mm -hmm. yeah if you want to <clears throat> if you want to um actually one of the sites we're going to visit on this tour the cumberland tour is the middlesboro impact structure or astrobleed so you'll be able to say you visited the only town in america that's built inside an astrobleed and it's it's quite an interesting. So you, yeah, we've got a field guides we're going to be following, learning about the geology and and the 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 impact phenomena, uh, and it's quite interesting. We're also going to be visiting some a region that's got more rock arches than anywhere except I believe Arches National Park in uh, that's right or National Mount yeah in Utah, and. Mm -hmm. The formation and origin of rock arches and natural bridges, very interesting story. We've got an amazing lodge we've requisitioned for the week all to ourselves. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, sorry, you guys aren't going to be there. 
Yeah. Yeah. But you've got to go to Gobekli Tepe. Yeah, sorry. Hopefully. Wait, yeah. You're going to have to trudge yeah. through the sure. earthquake yeah, rubble. Yeah, it's crazy. It's sad well, stuff going true. on. Well, that's true. Yeah. Is that going to yeah. affect your trip? Uh, it's still as far on. As we know. Yeah. Okay. We've been, we're yeah, we were we've looking been, at the maps last night. We've we've been, we were deciding uh, it's about 100 miles away, maybe. Yeah. You guys probably know more than me. Well, uh, the only thing I know is, you know, Ben has been talking with the. Uh, ben from Uncharted X has been talking with the tour people, and so have we. And they're basically saying it's still on, as far as they know. So, as far as we know right now, we're hmm. definitely going forward with it. So we have our tickets. We're looking forward to it. Maybe it exposed a few new things, yeah, and you'll be the, the other first possibility. Yeah. There's well, I can't wait to see what you guys find out when you visit those quarries. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. There's going to be. There's so much stuff I'm hmm. looking forward to. But there, to there has hmm. been a lot of damage, and it's infrastructure damage. It, yeah. It's it's been yeah. It's been rough for a lot of people, so it's going to be. Well, I don't then know. Some maybe. very rare events to have two large ones, you know, back yeah. to back, and then the series of uh, <clears throat> you know, over over a dozen very large aftershocks. Yes. Yeah. That's it's right. a, it's uh, dev- devastating and and unique uh, as far as uh, records. Um, yeah, I need, I need to study the maps more, but and I bad, bad news, people, unfortunately, for, for those over there. Yeah, people need... Bad news, for sure. But one of the interesting things that would be worthwhile more studying, I'm sure you guys, uh, Russ and Kyle, have already looked into this somewhat, but the reports of animals acting squirrely. Yes, I've seen that. Uh, mm-hmm. Birds uh, acting weird, like they're, yep. they're uh, you know, they're migratory. I mean, they're, they're navigational faculties all screwed up or something yeah. um yeah, leading up to the quake and there's a lot of mm. uh wow. similar stories going way back even to you know a thousand two thousand years ago reporting uh strange animal behavior prior to earthquakes yes yeah that's something we should look into we more should. I, um, yes i'm very interested in that kind of stuff yep as am i all right i can imagine Let's do well, so can you got. can you pin it down to one super extremely awesome question? I bet there's a bunch coming in. <laughs> I think there's... we should do seven episodes on earthquakes, Randall. That would be cool. There we go. Okay. There's also Scablands trips coming up, right? A Scablands trip yeah. and uh are we, yeah. and we're doing Montana this year as well. I think are that's we... in the fall. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. Montana's September uh backing up through the summer we have the cosmic summit 23 there in Asheville, which which the the live seating tickets are sold out at this point so um you can still get live stream which is 10 percent of the cost 49 bucks for that um so yeah again we'll have the link well that the links here in the description and then backing up like you guys said scab lands i mentioned is the 15th to the 20th of may and then uh yeah, we're 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 starting to pull together an event in Nashville for uh early early nope. I got out of calendar sequence there, but uh the Upper Cumberland tour is late the end the last week of March in Kentucky. So yeah, again, all these things are on randallcarlson.com and uh if you get the newsletter that comes out the first Saturday of each month, you get your info. Um all right, I skipped one there. April. This man's busy. Yeah, going going back to Sedona in April. Uh, for the uh, Earth Earth Ancients Earth Origins Earth Origins conference out there, um, and that's the same time we got a contact at the cabin at the contact at the canyons in uh, Duck Creek there in Utah. So those are going to be simultaneous weekends. So busy busy spring for Randall and the and the team. Yeah, and I um, Scott Walter, I'll be joining Scott Walter. Plus some other very interesting people doing interesting work there in the Sedona. It's not actually in Sedona. It's south of Sedona. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, but it's all on, on you can, it'll be on close the website. To, uh, yeah, close to Montezuma's Castle down there, a little bit south of Sedona. Yes. Yeah, there's a, a native lands casino down there, I believe, that's got a nice facility. Mm-hmm, right. Uh, let's see events and seminars coming up. We've got, uh, and, and hello to our, our brethren in, uh, California that are doing a contact at the cabin this weekend. I'm sorry. I'm not out there. Everybody. Um, yeah, you too. I know snakes are upset. We missed that, we but, uh, there yet. taking a, taking a hike up towards Shasta in a couple of days and, uh, yeah. jumping in some cold rivers that, uh, 
I'm sure Brandon Powell is is leading and uh, yelling about, and he'll be he'll be with us in in the Scablands. So get ready to do your ice baths with us in the Scablands in May. Yeah, they're in Mount they're at Mount Shasta right now. Yeah, <clears throat> the Ducky April dogs. event in Arizona is going to be uh, near Easter, so we're kind of doing a focus on the Grail mysteries. And the theme of it is the grail as a symbol for a lost technology. So undoubtedly we'll be bringing in some, some of the more germane current stuff that we're uh, been dealing with here. So, uh, yeah, you got some more, some questions. Yeah. Well, I, I usually, so when I do this, I try to go through them in chronological order. So I'm going to okay. try to do that. I may have missed some. There were I was trying to keep up with the chat. chat was but, crazy. Yeah. Chat's pretty spicy. You people <laughs> in the chat room are on fire. Right. So first one is Adam, and he's just six bucks. No comment. Thank you, Adam. Uh, N.E. Davis, $10. So this is our buddy Nick, I think. He says, super chat for Brad for upgrading his 1995 setup. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs> yeah, <Nick>. buddy. <laughs> Blast from the past, Brad. <laughs> Which Nick is this? I'm coming after you in Michigan, buddy. <laughs> oh, Nick was with us in Egypt. You remember yeah. Nick? Yeah. Yeah, my uh my my cone brother. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic <Dude>. cone bro. <laughs> Cheers, bro. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Hey, Good Nick. From <laughs> <laughs> Justin gave one dollar, no comment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh Amir, twenty bucks, says excited for the show tonight. Okay, this is he's asking if you can address what happened on JRE. So I think we did that. Uh, Brian. Five dollars says, "Wish I could send more. Keep on keeping on. Thank you, Brian. R. Allen, three bucks. Was that me? Did I do that? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Betty. No, R. Allen, seven one five. Thank you for the donation. Uh, Scott, five pounds. Hey, Randall, have you ever? If you ever visited my homeland of Scotland, where would you go first to investigate and study the land? The Scottish Highlands have mystery. My first stop would be at your place, uh, Scott, for dinner." Uh, then <laughs> we'd figure out where to go from there. But yeah, I could, Hey, I could come up with an awesome list, Scott. And, and, uh, yeah, Scotland is definitely on my, on my, uh, bucket list. To yes, visit. it is. Absolutely. Obviously I haven't been there yet. I'm very intrigued with Rosalind. Rosalind, Chapel. I was going to say, you know, Roslyn. that's the obvious one. Yes. But there's plenty of other hinges and, yep ancient structures to to investigate the ring of sure. Broderick. <laughs> and what uh i can't remember if that's the right name there's lots of stone rings that i want to see out there yeah yeah and i say geology also oh yeah right there. Oh, yeah yeah for sure a lot of a lot of my lineage goes back to scotland yeah i've got some some scottish lineage as well okay uh metanoia says uh metanoia yeah meta that might be how you say it. 720 yen. Randall, you were the inspiration my, for my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Poverty Point has a prominent role in Carl Monk's work. Are you familiar with his work? Not as much as I should be, no. I Yes, I'm familiar with it, but I'm not familiar to the point where I could feel like I could say anything qualified about it. All right. Well, thank you for the donation. Absolutely. Yeah. Houses and hair, 10 bucks. Thank you. No comment. <laughs> uh, Rob you. gives $25, says, thank you so much, guys, for continuing to do what you do. The world needs it, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, the Positive Universal Project, $10. Have you ever given thought to doing work on prehistoric Lake Idaho and the forces responsible for carving Hell's Canyon? Hope to see you in Asheville. Yes, of course. Yeah, we have yet to take that boat ride through the canyon, but it clearly was shaped and deepened by the Great Bonneville Flood that came through there um, somewhere around fourteen or 15,000 years ago at 40 million cubic feet per second. <clears throat> well, so, and the yeah. wild thing is that, well, many wild things, but that's like on the rim of the mm -hmm. semi-oval structure that has moved from the Yellowstone hotspot. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of history to that story to be understood and investigated. And then that potentially, again, right, the source of the outflows for the Columbia Basalt Plateau, yeah. where the Scablands are. 
Mm-hmm. All right, Dr. Emmett Brown the third. <laughs> ah, yes, <laughs> Doctor. Yes. Five bucks says, just got here. I think I want to build that bindle thing in my shop. Are any hey. of those elements hard to mount or acquire? Well, I tell you what, uh, this was, who was this, Emmett? Dr. Doctor Emmett? Dr. Brown, yeah. Doc? Doc, 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 Brown. Doc Brown. Doc Brown. Well, if you're if you're serious about that, yeah, contact us and we'll help out in any way we can um, with schematics and anything. Yeah, in any way we can, because we want to see prototypes built and tested. That's right. Is there, can I, I want to ask, is there anything like very specialized that has to be, that that would be difficult for like a normal person to get? Materials wise or? Uh, not so much material wise, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's complicated. <clears throat> um, but as a matter of fact, even as we're speaking, one of the, the, the turbine, uh, machine is being, uh, going to be replicated. And you you didn't show that earlier. Could, do you still have that that up on any of your screens? There show show that some of those beautiful turbines, the the copper one or the the stainless steel one that's blue, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Those are just brilliant looking, and it's like, what is that going to power? That looks otherworldly and incredible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, here's one here. <clears throat> So the materials aren't hard to get, but some of the things would have to be machined, especially in that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, materials can be anything from stainless steel to to copper to polycarbonate. Um, but yeah, very very particular sizes and ratios, right? Yeah. As you would as yeah. you would expect to to match the sacred numbers. This is what Bradley is talking about. Precision machining is yeah. That is so wild. So what this does is essentially accelerates the plasma into a vortex. And different and materials it, will have different somewhat, let's see here, like this. Oh, yeah. And it's also a, a new uh, model for a table of the elements, why, why the, elephant, uh, the elements are <laughs> <laughs> uh, li lined up and sequenced as they are. What do the proboscideans uh, have to do with this technology, Bradley? <laughs> elements of the elephants. Yeah, those are beautiful. And uh, yeah, transfixing is like, what can we do with those? And definitely... and some of the amazing things is uh, uh, on the on the turbines. There's there's not moving parts. So wrap your head around classic, that. How do you how do you Tesla. create hundreds of thousands of pounds of thrust and not have an axle that spins? So yeah, that's that's one of the many layers Randall and and Malcolm are going to get to over the the next period of uh, introducing this. All right. Well, we still have plenty of donations and questions, and they're still coming. Go in. for it. I'm also I'm tr trying to read them and keep up with the ones that are coming in. So give me a second here. Okay, Mark. Thank you everyone for yes, uh, thank the you contributions. So yeah, and the questions. Yeah, just the attention at all is great. Mark Francis gives twenty dollars. No comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Jeff. Ah, Jeff the curator, lover of books. What's up, bro? <laughs> gives uh ten dollars and eighty cents. Says love you guys. What's this uh, about the moon then? The moon. <laughs> The moon, Randall. The uh, moon. Yeah. <laughs> well, Russ and I are going to do a little something on that coming up soon. All right. Hey. hey. <laughs> yeah. It's 2,160 miles diameter, and you're going to hear about that a lot. Just in case anyone was wondering, me and Brad are going to do a podcast about <laughs> beer. <laughs> about beer. <laughs> Damn right. That one will probably get more views than the one Damn on the moon. Right, buddy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, Russ, have we... <clears throat> Did I get ousted? Wait a second, Russ. I mean, you're going to talk about this. What happened? Well, Russ and I, you know, we, we're going to talk it over whether we're going to let you guys in on it. Oh, right. That's right. We have been discussing this. Like, should we let Kyle and Brad be involved in this moon thing? I don't know. <laughs> just, well, just turn I off just, our mics. <laughs> I, we'll I go here. a bit lunatic when that starts coming up. <laughs> All right, Rex. Rex gives five bucks. Says, Randall, your wisdom and grace inspire me. More greatness. Thank you, Rex. Thanks, Rex. <clears throat> uh, Rob, 
$100 Canadian says, The bros, Brad, Randall, keep it up. I am sincerely grateful for all the knowledge and research you have shared with me over the years. Cheers to you all. Thank you, Rob. Really appreciate that. Cheers, brother. Okay, Doug gives 50 bucks and says, Malcolm Bindel is 100% a con man. How much money did you give him? Joe Rogan didn't air it because he 100% knows you are getting scammed. He's protecting you, Randall, and you need to get out of this as soon as possible. Did did he listen to anything I said? 100%. Appreciate the hundred bucks, but <clears throat> maybe come he was on, looking man. for his caps lock button because it was on for this entire comment. You might have missed what you said because of that. I, th- I think oh. he I think he posted that before. Maybe maybe it was yeah, that sounded know. familiar. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well. For a hundred bucks, I'm going to be nice to him. <laughs> right. Well, fifty bucks, and remember that <laughs> well, 50 these bucks. are. From well, then the, I'm only going to be half as nice. These are from no, the I'm, entire I'm show. I'm also going to be half as so, nice. So yeah, some of them are from uh, from before you started talking about it for sure. Oh, okay. Um, All right, I'm going to cut you some slack, Doug. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Still, thank you for the for the. Damn yeah. it! Hell yeah, man! If, if I Thanks. said that, Doug, I would have lost all. I would have. Negative attaboys right now. Negative attaboys. <laughs> <laughs> He's cutting you some serious slack. Oh, he dude. is, yeah. Oh, okay. Should be, should be thankful. I'll give you, I'll give you some brat boys though. <laughs> Rex gives another $5 for the cuss jar because Randall dropped the F-bomb. He says, that's a $5 word, buddy. Uh, I don't, yeah, and I don't, uh, you know, throw that word around loosely. Right. You know that I'm pissed when I use that word. Yes, that's right. I think people in the chat picked that up. They said that it was rare for you to use that. Uh-huh, it's, yeah. it's rare. See, that's the thing about <clears throat> words of power. If you use them just all the time for any old trivial thing, they lose their power. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they are rolling in strong. They are. I can't. You guys are you guys are donating on a a lot. Thank you. Amir gives uh, $3.69 says get him Randall forget Joe Rogan and the naysayers. Yeah, thanks Amir. Uh, that's the direction I'm actually leaning, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Forget the naysayers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, w. Decker, 20 bucks says, thank you for all you do, Randall and team. Thank you. Thank you, man. That's right. Okay, and there's another one from Doug here. 20 bucks says, if you act, people actually care about Randall, so now he's talking to the chat. Say something. He is 100% being conned by a con artist. Joe Rogan is trying to protect Randall, yet Randall is surrounding himself with yes men that won't say something. Is that us? Are Come on, yes? man. Yes. Where, yes. Is, where are these people substantiating their yeah. 100% claims from? I've spent the last almost three weeks straight. I, I went home for two days and came right back, and, and it's been 17-hour work days. We've been going till 2.30 at night. This guy knows his stuff. He's lived it. He's He's recorded it. He's built the machines. He's, They've been tested independently. Just, you know, these people just, they don't know what they're talking about. Give some substantiation for what they're saying. Uh, I've been at it for three weeks. Randall's been at it for three months, plus the six years beforehand, it, you know, but but three months intensely. Um, I think we have a better gauge than whoever these people are writing. Oh, sure. Yeah. But still, thank you guys for the donation. You know, we'll read what your comment says. Sure. Yes, yes man. G- they're, yeah, they're allowed, it but is. it's, you know. Brad has been spending 17 that's... hours a day saying yes. That's what he's been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounding my seat. And that's, it really, that's an insult to you guys. Right. That's exactly what it was. Which that's exactly is, what hilarious. it was. And I don't yeah. appreciate that. Me and Randall was... had a knockdown drag out they in the did. break of the last show, and I won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There, there was. You guys went on for like almost an hour and a half. That's why I fell asleep in, the, in that episode. That's right. There was a pretty didn't, big argument. We didn't freaking start till 11 p.m. because you, you talked about it for an hour and a half because because Kyle was skeptical. Yeah. He was like, let's talk about this. I don't blame know, man. me for you falling asleep, Brad? Really? There's no blame. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. That I'm still, I'm still editing that episode uh, as soon as I get home. But, yeah, this has gone from three days to, to – 13 days here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. GEC812 gets $5 and says, Randall, language. <laughs> language. <laughs> I love you guys. I, did, I didn't want to say it. Thanks, bud. <laughs> I mean, I, I, my, love you, my general too. approach is I, I prefer to keep this thing G rated, but, you know, we slip up sometimes. 
<laughs> Better make <Hey>. a point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Josh, fifty dollars Canadian says, "Have you guys uh, talked to Elon Musk about this? I'm sure he would build one for you. I love the show. Keep up the great work." No, we haven't, but nope. you never know what could be in the pipeline. No, there you go. All right, Lawrence, $25. Yeah, says, there, Lo- love your work. There, there are no closed, closed doors when you've got something like this. No closed doors. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Lawrence, 25 bucks says, love your work, Randall. I live in Tracy, California. Tell me, what would have happened to my city during the Younger Dryas impact? Any chance I would have lived? Uh, Probably not. <laughs> Was he near um, Mount Shasta? Um, you said he was Tracy, California? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it T-R-A-C-Y? That's right. All right, let me see where it is here. Uh, I'll just throw in the the Snake Brothers are are not yes men. They uh, yeah. they are they are happy to voice their opinion and they're strong with it and uh, they question appropriately. Um, so well, thank you, Brad. Appreciate that, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I can't say specifically. However, I do know that offshore on some of the. Uh, the Santa Rosa Islands and things, there's definitely evidence that that was catastrophically catastrophically affected. Okay. So <clears throat> we can look into that. Um, you know, we Bradley and I have toured the Mojave Deserts in Southern California, and there's absolutely no doubt that there's imprints of catastrophe and gigantic flooding events and things all over the Mojave Desert. Um, how they would have affected specifically the area around Tracy, I can't say. For sure, but um, when I uh, pull up, I can look at uh, the, the maps here and uh, probably get a better idea. But while I'm doing that, why don't we look at some more questions? Yeah, and I'll just say, just to explain what's happening here, we are Kyle and I are checking our phones because that's how we're keeping track of the super chats. Yeah, just so you guys know, it, it maybe no, it we're does just seem, ignoring. We're just Randall totally ignoring the like, whole show and reading. Twitter. I'm on Facebook. No. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to keep track of the super chat so we can go back and read them. So that's what we're doing. Uh huh. Okay. An early announcement too, since you brought up Mojave Desert, uh, I know guys have been uh, scoping out some sites and uh, finding some fossils. Uh, some of our regular tour mates, and uh, we've mentioned multiple times, Bruce is down in uh, Southern California. He gets out there in his new uh, rigged up 4 by 4 and we're going to do a contact at the cabin out in the Mojave Desert uh, 2024. So, yeah, he, right. keep up, and, uh, you know, you may see us out in the desert, too. Well, we, we U- still have... Uniquely beautiful part of the country there. And we, we still have tons of comments, but, I mean, we're already over time. What do you guys think? I really? can read a few I'm more. good for a few more minutes. Okay. Yeah, I love them. Patty, who we know, Patty's been on lots of trips with us. Hi, Patty. Patty. Hey, Patty. Hi, Patty. Seventy-two dollars says Randall. How about having Malcolm in on a Cosmographia episode covering what you guys wanted to cover with Joe? Love you, Randall and Brad and the Snake Bros. Well, that's a great idea. But we are what we're doing is since he's going to be leaving very soon, um, Bradley and Mike uh, Outube have been recording, making recordings with him. Um, and so those will be available, um, in some, some form or another. And, uh, we will get, we will get that together, but yeah, he's going to have an intense couple months here, um, going, going to these larger international companies and, uh, countries and, uh, advising on the, how to build their own versions of, of this technology and test it for themselves and, and move forward with its implementation. Um, it's really freaking exciting. Um, but yeah, we don't know when it'll be back in the U S uh, we're trying to get as many things as we can on, on record with him individually. And then, uh, also with him and Randall. Uh, so yeah, if you're not a subscriber for this channel on, uh, the U boob, uh, and or how to, uh, there'll be a lot more, uh, exclusive stuff coming out, uh, through how to, HowTube.com, H-O-W-T-U-B-E, HowTube.com. Yeah, yeah our, our partner. And uh, Randall is uh, 
recently been named uh, officer in in that uh, business. So, uh, Pre- president of HowTube. That's that's going to be a big advance for everyone involved too. All right, let's do a few more of these at least. Uh, crypto, Chris, yeah, sure. Crypto, Chris, four hundred and thirty-two dollars. Crypto, Chris, where you been? Yeah, man. Four hundred thirty-two, <laughs> man. That's uh, that is Malcolm's favorite number. Got my ticket to the Cosmic Summit. Looking forward to finally meeting, uh, getting the opportunity to meet everyone. Proud to be a supporter of the work you all do. Thank you. Wow, that's, dude. That's awesome. that's awesome. Great. Yeah. Look Thank forward to meeting you, Chris. Crypto Chris. Yeah. Crypto Chris. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. All yeah. right. Here's another one about uh, Malcolm. So Jason, $50, says Randall, brother. Malcolm is absolutely conning you, and you burn your bridge with Rogan in your newsletter. <laughs> That's why you haven't heard back from him and will never be on his show again. Ditch these yes men around you as soon as possible. Oh, come on, Another man. Yes <laughs> come on, man. You you're just you're 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 imagining things and believing they're real. <laughs> I'm on good terms with Rogan. I hung out with Rogan after the podcast. There's no issue between me and Joe. There'll be no problem with me getting back on there. So stop projecting your shit into this scenario. You don't know what you're talking about, my friend. Yeah, remember the story they told. They went on, the, they did the podcast. Then Rogan invites them to the comedy show. They did that that night. You know, this there wasn't. It wasn't like Rogan kicked them out of the studio and said, "Never come back here." <laughs> yeah, you know. Did you see the photo? That was <laughs> that was after the show. Yeah. Right. Rex gives oh, another man. five dollars. Says plasmoidal well, is, perturbations. Is this the right time to say? I believe him. <laughs> Bruce, I am, I am bucks. a yes man. Oh yeah, <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> I agree with everything Randall says. All right. Sorry, what'd you say? No, I, I missed but, the note. <laughs> but that's why I like. That's why I appreciate Brad is because he's not afraid to disagree with me. Right. Yes, Randall. That's, I agree. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Bruce gives us ten bucks, probably for for beers. He doesn't say. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate that, Bruce. Bruce. Six pack, six yeah. pack, Bruce. Thanks, buddy. Uh, there's a bunch more here, guys. What do you want to do? Keep, keep going. Keep going. Shane, Batman. twenty dollars says I'm from Connecticut, or no, that's not right. Conneo. I don't know how to say it. Ohio, I think. Con- Conneaut Lake. Conneaut. Yes, okay. where uh, Cedar Cedar Point is. Okay, I noticed one time you guys Thank were you, talking Atlas. about giants in grade school. The teacher used to talk about them and how, when the town settled, they found a large burial ground of giant natives. Wow, I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll 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 yeah, we'll be circling back at some point. We're gonna take a deep dive into the monumental earthwork architecture of pre Columbian America. We're really and we need to organize some tours. Yeah. Bradley and I have visited uh the majority of these sites over the years. Um I've collected a lot of great really interesting information on them. So um yeah, I think we yeah we got do that. excuse me yeah we got we got four new tours in the works and the on top of the Southwest and the yeah. Scablands Part One and Part Two that we've been doing um, I'm gonna spend a few weeks going around and we'll have a Scablands Part Three uh, hopefully for 2024 that'll get us through uh, the Wallula Gap uh, out the Columbia Gorge into the old Willamette Valley. Uh, the Calamineros, the Mount St. Helens is not part of the particular flood story, but it's right there. Why not go see it? It's very mm-hmm. impressive and uh, mm-hmm. interesting story in its own there, uh, from the eruption 1980. And then all the way out to the Astoria, uh, on the, on the Oregon, Washington border at the Pacific ocean. So that'll, that'll be part three, uh, the finale of the Cordillera and floods tour. And then also the Bonneville flood, which a bunch of people have been asking for, mm-hmm. uh, we haven't been through much of that territory in the last 15 years, but I've been start to revisit and uh, going to make an itinerary for that one. Uh, as you guys are mentioning, the the mound structures uh, throughout Ohio going down into, uh, uh, I, I think we'd have to end it at Cahokia, which could be like a grand finale because that's the the largest site in the, in the nation. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the fourth one that'll be coming, I don't think we can do all these new ones next year, but uh, the Finger Lakes, uh, Central New York, mm-hmm. uh, Mohawk Valley, some new research has come out there that, that you had a uh, discussion about in the recent uh, monthly newsletter, Randall, talking about uh, the paper looking at outburst floods from the, mm-hmm. the uh, margin of the glacier there. And uh, Finger Lakes, amazing sights, and uh, up into the the crazy, awesome Drumlin Fields south of Lake Ontario, a potential uh, impact site from the comet that that broke up. We think 
uh, with multiple sites, uh, one of them into, into Eastern Lake Ontario. So yeah, lots of stuff to look forward to and getting out in the field with Randall and the, and the team here. What else you got, Russ? A couple more? Yeah, we got plenty. Man on the Moon gives five bucks. No comment. Thank you. Thank you for the donation. Shane, $10, says, uh, I will take a look at my public library sometime and see if I can find any local articles and documentation, and I will forward them if I find anything worth, lo- worth looking into. Hmm. Well, and we will... Uh... About what? That's my question. Maybe there was some other context there. Oh, probably, ref- I'm guessing, referring to the oh, intrigue. Yes. That's right. The Giants. Yeah. Oh, the Giants. Yes. Okay. Same oh. person. Sorry, cool. I should have connected cool. that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of talking about the intrigue, but we probably have to address it one more time with a little bit of documentation so people can see how phony some of these things are, yeah. actually are. But, yeah, the Giants, I'd much rather talk about Giants than politics. Right. Uh, Katie gives $14.40 and says, is the holy city inside the moon? You better uh, contact me privately about that one, Katie. (laughs) The whole episode on its own right there. Way to go, Katie. We'll get to that later, I think is what that means. (laughs) Yo, Marty (laughs) Lyle. Katie, uh, yeah, I want to, yes. All right, uh, Christopher gives $9.99, says, what level of impacts is this new technology relatable to from a historical perspective? The internet, steam engine, fire... Thank you for being awesome. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, go ahead, Brad. No, just summarize. I mean, it it's, could full on be the next equivalent of the Industrial Revolution. I mean, it will be that far reaching. Yeah, right. I mean, this is, this is a science that's in its infancy. Right. It, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah. But the 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 listing of applications of this technology is, uh, I've I've seen a diagram with twenty different versions of uh, ang- angles of what this can be used as. Uh, he showed me just one earlier with his, uh, the business plan that's got seventy two sections, uh, you know, fully fleshed out plan that's pages and pages and pages and dozens of pages, um. So they're they're considering that, and it was it was uh, I can't remember if it was over thirty or almost forty, but uh, the the different directions this uh, technology can be applied to, and and he even brought it up, and I I don't remember, but it was like washing machines, you know, the the bubbling of the use of the, of the water and the bubbles that can go uh, to clean your clothes, and there's absolutely no moving parts. It, it, I mean, that's just one simple thing that can be redesigned with this technology. Uh, uh, you know, simple washing machine for your clothes. All right. Yeah, that's one. That's always one thing about a, a new development is you don't, you can't tell what kinds of things it could become. Like totally. once the application yep. is out there, people will use it for all kinds of stuff that the in, original inventor may never have thought of. So. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Tyler gives ten dollars. No comment. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, Thank you all. Uh, yeah, it's it's great that people are paying attention and wanting to contribute. Okay, there's a five dollar donation you. here from. I don't have the name. I'm sorry, I didn't capture the I, name. I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, there there is still a Randall Carlson Patreon account where people can sign up to do monthly donations. Uh, there there is more bonus content coming out uh early access to things um some of our obscure files that have become available to the patreon contributors uh there's also donations available directly uh one time or uh repeated through howtube.com the the randall carlson channel on howtube um but yeah we appreciate every everybody that realizes uh the importance of randall's work and wanting to support in one way or another so yeah it's patreon.com slash randall carlson and just so you know guys if you're if you are donating right now we're wrapping it up yeah it's so it's not likely unlikely that i have so many that i've collected while he's trying to go through these so it's 
but thank you all so yes, much. Thank it's, you. It's incredible. <laughs> Got a lot of support, you guys. Randall and Brad. Killing it. Yes. So, uh, like I was saying, $5 donation. I didn't get the name. I'm sorry. But the question is, is are you going to upload this PowerPoint describing the technology? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What we're going to be doing yes. is we're going to. It'll the, be its the, own the, website. Sorry. Yeah. The tutorials that we're going to be doing are going to be based around this PowerPoint. We're not going to upload it all at once, but we will be doing it incrementally um, over a period of perhaps several months. Yes, but sit it there. I'm almost done. All right. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, Justin gives $5, says, My favorite pace, place in the world is the Tonto Natural Bridge in Arizona. Have any of you ever been? And, Randall, any thoughts on natural bridge formation? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, gosh. Thoughts on that, yeah. Out, out in Lake Powell? Tonto National, Natural Bridge. Natural Bridge in Arizona. Yes, uh, I certainly do have thoughts about it, <clears throat> and I definitely think it's the re the the result of fluvial turbulence. And we can actually there's actually two natural bridges in the Scablands that were undoubtedly created by these intense turbulent floods. And even before I knew about those two specific examples, uh, I had a suspicion because you don't see rock arches and natural bridges being formed anywhere. What you do see is them being slowly destroyed. Yep, yep. Um, and so uh, knowing that, I became convinced that they are produced by um, forces that are not operational at present. So, <clears throat> we, yeah, we, we definitely, and I, and I think maybe in the aftermath of the uh, Cumberland tour, that we're, we're going to be visiting a lot of rock arches and bridges. We, we should actually do a whole episode devoted to that. And and those are mostly in limestone or they're a the lot. bedrock that was above the limestone uh, more recent. I think that most of them are in limestone in Kentucky. Yeah, I think so too. I got to, I got to get up there and do a little more study myself uh, before we do that tour. It's going to be fun. So yeah, people um, March 25th through 30th, uh, Everything will be within Kentucky, uh, Eastern Kentucky, five days. Uh, we've uh, included an extra day uh, if you want to stick around with us. And there's also an uh, opportunity to do some kayaking uh, within, a, within a cave. Um, should be extraordinary. And then also on the site, there's a <laughs> series of zip lines. Uh, mm -hmm. So some people have definitely chosen to participate in those five zip lines that get you around uh, – I forget how fast they go. You know, I might scare some people away, but yeah, you don't have to choose that option. But uh, yeah, like several hundred feet high over these gorges. Uh, it's really a spectacular sight there in the the Red River Gorge area, um, geologic area there in in Kentucky near. Uh, it's it's east of Lexington. All right. Well, I think so, we, yeah, we need outstanding. To, we need to wrap this up. I'm gonna go through the names I still have. Without reading the comments, and then Kyle's got a bunch Thank of you guys for doing this. I miss yes. you, brothers. There, you didn't even get to say bye out of there in Texas. Oh, well, you know, everybody was in a hurry. Yeah. Mm, right. That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. yeah Did so. you guys stick around? Because I, I figure you guys will go, like, be going back there and we stuck pestering them bit, to let yeah. you go see the site. We you know, did, you yeah, made we, friends with Ken probably. We chatted and, uh, for a bit, yeah. and hopefully we can. Yeah. We talked about coming back out when it dried out, and they seemed to be receptive to that. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Good, good. Okay, Justin gave five dollars. Uh, Rhizosphere, two bucks. Uh, Metanoia again, five hundred yen. Terry Jackson, ten dollars. Uh, MP Schaefer, ten bucks. And that's what I've got. Are we doing all? Yeah, we doing all rock. Just, just go through rock, them real rock, quick. rock. Thank you. All right, uh, TKB one TX, five bucks. Rune Chaos, one, ten dollars. MP Schaefer, ten dollars. Margaret Watson, twenty dollars. Crypt oh he did. Hey Margaret, Crypt thank you. Yes, thank Agamemnon. you, Margaret. Oh yes, thank you. Agamemnon. So I think she's going she's going, uh she said this is the uh this is what I want for my birthday to go to the Upper Cumberland tour with you guys. So Cool. I think she's part of it. Agamemnon Fireman, five bucks, Eric. Carmichael, five dollars, Parker Hill, a hundred dollars, Osiris, twenty dollars. Osiris. Parker Hill, That's another great, dollar. people. Thank you so much. Rex Strigo, what's up, dude? Two bucks. Uh, Acerb, eight, five dollars. 
Steve Cardulis, 279, Canadian. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we always <laughs> got to say that it's the Canadian. You heard that, Darren. <laughs> Fake money. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Luke uh, Bergioi, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Sorry if I butchered that. $5. Thank you very much. Parker Hill, again, $20. Um, David Baglivo, 100,000 Indian somethings <laughs> that turns out to be like $6.60. Thank you very much. <laughs> Rupees. <Thank> you. <laughs> Damn. I looked it up because I was like, whoa, that's a lot. Uh, Damon <laughs> Runyon, $2. Cameron uh, Boltby, $5. Stone Gats, $10. Escaping the Matrix, uh, multiple donations of $1. I'm not going to read all of them, but thank you very much for that. CC Pino, $5. Will Cover, $2. Um, Francis Malone, 20 bucks. Shane Horton, $10. Hundido, $5. New Phase, 4T, $108. Hey, thank you. Hey. How are you? Nice. Hope you're doing One well. One of our favorite numbers. <laughs> and we know her yep. as well. One fourth of 432. No, who, who is that from the 108? Well, her. We can't, we can't dox her. Her though. name yeah. on YouTube is New Phase. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, but we know hey, her. New Phase. Yeah. We know her. Um, Nodex Snow Badger. $5. Hawaii's nice in January, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and Peter Shell, one hundred and eight dollars. Francisco Peter. Malone. Thanks, Peter. Another ten dollars from Francisco Malone. Uh, Mark Nabel, five forty-five. Ske sketch therapy, two dollars. You remember that uh, uh, salt shelf in the Gulf that was five hundred fifty miles wide that. Uh, Malcolm kept bringing up and wanted to talk about. Um, that was brought to my attention by by Pete Pete Shell. So oh, okay, mm, cool. I got to still get back to him with some feedback. But uh, yeah, interesting research, and and Malcolm was really fascinated by that. Nerd Roddick, hundred dollars. Hey, thank you, buddy. Pete Stronach, seventy nine ninety nine, eighty bucks. Okay, and that's all I got. Okay, and Good then grief, uh, you guys, y'all are yeah. amazing. Uh, Ten bucks from uh, Acer. Uh, Let's see. Maddie, 20 bucks. Hey, thank you. Madeline. We also know her. And uh, Elijah. Hey, Madeline. $5. Good job. That's great. Yep, that's it. Thank you guys so much. All the donations were really appreciated. So we, Cheers, Sorry everybody. we can't get to everyone's comments and questions. We do try. We uh, try. Yeah, that was, that was over the top. Yeah. Y'all are awesome. While I think of it, I'll just quickly remind everyone that uh, the, the website Sacred Geometry International is still illegally selling my work. Roger Lent. believe it, it's me. So um trying to get the word out um, <clears throat> because it's been going on way too long. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the, the, the individual in question who's running the website was uh, deplatformed by Bluehost and he, he migrated all of my content over to an offshore. Um, where was it? Malaysia, I believe. Yeah. And is still still selling my work, still letting people taking donations, letting people believe they're donating to me, and and then at the same time going behind my back and trying to discredit me because of course he doesn't want the truth being publicized um, because he's been profiting off selling my work with no remuneration to me for years now, and uh, so spread the word. That RandallCarlson.com. That that's the only. That's place the there. only site. RandallCarlson.com. HowTube.com, um, our right. our podcast right here, Cosmographia, and um, yep, got to do that. Yeah, it, you know, if you notice that the website purporting to be Randall, but it never mentions the Randall Carlson podcast, uh, you know, beware. Mm -hmm. That's not the right space. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, as as our audience grows, he's doing everything he can to optimize the site so that if you put in Randall Carlson. That'll come up near the top. So it's a fraud. Yeah. Speaking of cons and frauds, there <laughs> that, that is that one. one is. Yeah, that okay. is actually a con. Yeah. All right, guys. Great. Stream. All right. Thank you Good so to much see for you the guys chat. again. You guys were great. To see you guys. Chat was quite Excellent. lively. Very right. spicy. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. you. And I'll second more that. more news more news to come. It's an exciting oh, yeah. time. All right, All guys. All right, guys.
Good night, everyone. Good night. So, Russ and Kyle, Bradley and Hold I have on been a off. Second. Oh, wait a second. We're still. <laughs> What's that? That's being weird with its on off button. <laughs> we can't turn it off oh. either. It's like we couldn't turn it on. We can't turn it off. Okay, what's happening now? Give it a second. 